So this is the challenge online on the internet. Notice the fries. And look what we have today. Apparently this is new. So, I'll leave that uh I'll leave that up to you guys. I don't know. What do you what do you think? Is there uh is there any difference in the look? I will remain objective and leave that up to you. Good stuff. Hey everyone, I'm out here enjoying a beautiful morning. And while my eyes are busy and preoccupied, I'm keeping my mind busy, guys, with Audible. So I'd like to thank the sponsor today's video being Audible. And also, it's actually one of my favorite apps right now. So Audible is the leader, the leader in spoken word entertainment, guys. We're not just talking audiobooks, we're not just talking now podcasts. Guys, they have the full Audible Plus catalog. That catalog is now available to all members. And every month you're also getting a free additional audiobook. And what I use for my free audiobook, guys, one of my favorite titles of all time, being The Way of the Spearman by David Data. I think it's an essential, essential listen for all men, guys. We're talking women, relationships, purpose. Additionally, I also got The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Of course, to start it, Audible's super easy to get started. Just hit that link down below. We're talking audible.com forward slash Joel Hansen or text Joel Hansen to 500 500. But it's not just amazing titles like the ones I mentioned, guys. That Audible Plus catalog is absolutely massive. We're talking thousands and thousands and thousands of titles. And so many exclusive, guys. I'm just getting into all the podcasts where I'm learning lots about not only health, fitness, and also one I just checked out there. It's called The Law of Attraction as well, guys. I'm all about being positive. So start with your free month of Audible right now, guys. You can download these products, listen to them anywhere, anytime. This is your playlist for life, whether you want romance, whether you want personal development. So again, hit that link, guys, down below. Audible.com forward slash Joel Hansen or text Joel Hansen to 500-500 and start your access to the full Audible Plus catalog, not to mention the free audiobook every month, guys. So let's get to the rest of the video and happy learning. Hey everyone, Joel Hansen here today. We're at Merida, Merida, Mexico. So we're here to do a food challenge, guys. I actually tried to go to the gym. I'm outside the gym because Google said it was open and their website said it was open, but they are definitely not open, guys. They are definitely closed, unfortunately. So we're not getting to go to the gym. So I'm just gonna head straight to the food challenge. So we're going to a place called Shark Burgers. So there's a location here in Merida, then there's one in Playa del Carmen. So what they're, they actually have two challenges. Their first challenge is a burger challenge, which we're going to do today. So it's four of their big burgers, four of their grande, like mucho grande burgers. They have different sized burgers. Um, they're all, I think, like a pound and a half, maybe a little bit more. And I'm not sure if that's just meat or like the whole burger. One spicy, and then there's four servings of fries. So I have no clue what this will look, well, I saw pictures, but I don't really know what this will look like. I don't speak the language, so this is gonna be pretty interesting. But uh, yeah, I know we're gonna have 40 minutes to complete it. It is 400 pesos if we fail, which is approximately 20 US dollars, but 400 pesos, $400 burger challenge today, guys. So wish me luck. Let's hope this place is open. Hope Google is right in this regard and their website. So fingers crossed, let's see what happens. My Uber will be here momentarily. And uh, let's go have our first food challenge in Mexico. All right, so we made it to the restaurant. They just opened up, so Shark Burgers. It is definitely, I can tell, supposed to be a little more Americanized restaurant. I mean, their menu is like chicken wings and burgers, um, and it's in English. So, you know, it's a little bit more tailored to a certain crowd. We got our four burgers and four orders of uh, papas, of potatoes, so. Papas Fritas. Okay, so the challenge just arrived. Like I said, it's uh, looking a little different than the pictures. I'll leave that up to you guys. Anyway, so 40 minutes we're going to have. Looks really good. Uh, apparently one person has ever beat it, just one person, and I'm sure it looked like the other version. Let's have some fun. Everyone, so I've known a food challenge in a long time, but let's give this a go. So let's start, we'll say, uh, cinco, cuatro, tres, dos, It does taste good. Do you have a glass? Yes. That's it. This was definitely the spicy burger. 
Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we're here at Shark Burgers in Merida. Merida, Mexico, in Yucatan. So, uh, beautiful place guys. Merida was great. Uh, it is definitely a little bit less traveled, uh, I'd say tourism, tourist destination, but it's definitely becoming increasingly popular in the coming years. And I can definitely see why. So you come to Tom Province, very safe, uh, very, very beautiful. And I will honestly, actually the funny thing, they're very well known for their um, habanero hot sauces. Just a fun fact. So here we are, guys, doing the big boy challenge. And damn, she was a big boy. He was a thick boy. Um, four big burgers. This, uh, the couple bottom ones and that one, like anyone that had the big patties on it were absolutely huge. Um, some of these had a pound and a half of beef. Um, I think it could, maybe the one did not, but all the other three, if not all four, definitely did. Um, so like 680 gram um, of beef, uh, but it was good overall. I've had burgers in quite a few countries across the world, and I will say generally stepping outside of North America, uh, or like specifically Canada, US, burgers are quite different. Uh, different taste, different quality, different composition, but these were very delicious. I would say the best burgers I have had outside of Canada and the United States. Um, in regards to the challenge itself, it's definitely a big one. Um, at least, you know, and it may, maybe they vary a little bit in sizes as well. Um, so that can really kind of uh, differentiate your overall experience. What I, although, you know, it was a $400, 400 pesos for this challenge. Um, like I said, if you do the American conversion, it's really not bad. It's closer to about 20 USD, at least at the time of this video. So, you know, 20, 25 bucks, whatever you want to call it. Very reasonable, honestly, for the amount of food you get. And in comparison to like even the other prices on the menu, this was definitely a, uh, it was a good deal. They were definitely trying to get people to try this challenge out. And it was actually undefeated at this location. Catch up. This one has an egg, I think. A couple different staff members there. There was first the kind of the server, the gentleman I was mostly uh, talking with, um, and as I came and did the challenge, was doing the challenge. We also had a manager or an owner um, kind of come on out. Ketchup is very different too. So what that gentleman said, because I went into this thinking it had only been defeated once ever, he was saying that at this location in Merida, this burger challenge was actually totally undefeated. And then at the location in Playa del Carmen, it had, be it had been defeated just a couple times over like the years and years of its existence. But I'm very curious as to what version it looked like. Um, there's what mine looked like here in Merida. And then the apparently all the pictures were coming from the uh, Playa del Carmen location. Who knows? I don't know. Like I said, just pictures, just pictures. Feel free to have a look for yourself. Um, let me know what you think in the comment down below, guys. Do you think it was um, like my burgers looked like the picture? Do you think they looked a little different? Like I said, I'll definitely leave it up to you. Another thing I was interested in was the Mexican ketchup. And oh boy, oh boy, let's talk about that because that was very, very different. I can tell I'm pretty rusty. So in Canada and the US, I'm a huge, huge, huge ketchup person, but the ketchup here was very, very different. Um, in fact, I really don't think it had any tomatoes in it. It reminded me of just like, it, or like basically what it was, was just a gelatinous kind of style of sauce, let's say uh, like a sweet and sour sauce or something like that. Um, and it was, to me, flavored like tomatoes, like there's no tomatoes in it. So that was different. And it is very possible it's only this ketchup, but I was the only ketchup I ever tried in Mexico at that. I should have let this cool off. I'm just heating up. 
Mucho. So now we're sitting just over six minutes in. The gentlemen were uh, quite surprised that I was able to eat this much. And it was kind of very interesting dynamic. I don't know if they were excited to see it or not excited to see it, at least at this point. Um, and lots of conversation going on. Again, I can't speak Spanish. And the whole time from whenever I got there, um, you know, while I was eating, uh, when they were talking about the size of the challenges, there's a lot of little side conversations going on that I couldn't understand. But I will say, you know, to this point, there's really no complaints. Everything was overall going pretty, pretty well. Right on eight minutes in, we finished the burgers. Just a ridiculous amount of fries. Good things to kick in my butt, guys. I'm out of shape. It's so hot out. I'm not used to it. But of that, everybody, I believe that's all the information I have to give you today. Um, again, it was very interesting, guys. And let's just say there's more action to come. So definitely check out the, the uh, let's say, I don't want to say drama, but check out all what was transpired at the end of the video. Let's get to it. Hopefully I can get that finished with these massive, massive, massive amount of fries. Literally, it was at least two pounds of fries, if not more. Um, so maybe their orders of fries are really big or just mine are really big. And I am legit sweating. But with that, everybody, enjoy the rest of the video. Let me know down below what you think. And uh, ultimately, let's see if we can defeat the big boy challenge, the thick boy challenge, I think it should be called, here at the Merida version of Shark Burgers. Just finish up, guys, about, I don't know, 19-ish minutes. Your time will be on screen. Definitely a little bigger, a little bigger than I thought it was gonna be. But overall, I can't really complain. The burgers were good. The fries were fries. But so that would get me up for free. 
pretty cool. I guess we're the second person to ever defeat it. And there's lots of discussions going on, lots of phone calls being made as I was eating this. And they're taking pictures, so I'll talk to them a bit. I'll give you some more info. So everybody, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll give you some more uh, after the fact here momentarily. Let's see what happens. So, one minute. All right, everyone, just made it back home. I uh, just got dropped off with the Uber, so that was interesting. Um, so yeah, obviously, maybe a little bit of difference in the size. Again, I said I'll leave that up to you. Um, and then, like I said, I, I should have had it on camera when I asked him, because I showed the guy the picture of the, ch the old challenge, and I was like, why is there more potatoes? Uh, and he was just, and then he, you know, mentioned it to the other guy. There's two, three of them. There's three like employees or managers or owners or you know, people there. By the time I started, and they kind of like, you know, gave some words back and forth before saying like, oh, that's a new thing. So I was like, yeah, 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 right. That's what I mean. That's what I get for I guess you know being obviously not from there. Um, staff were kind. You know, I have no complaints. The one gentleman who did appear to be like an owner or a manager said that. Uh, that it's actually never been defeated at that location, so it was undefeated there. Maybe the size is why, uh, but besides that, um, they also, after I finished it, came over and told me, well, like, the prize is either a discount, like, AKA the meal for free, or I can get 50% off food, and then tried to sell me on another burger, saying like, oh, the burger's really good, like, you should get some to go. And I'm like, bro, I just had like four of them like I don't need any more food uh, so that was pretty funny uh, but yeah guys I mean overall I have no real complaints it was an interesting experience I'll leave that up to your uh, let's say perspective um, and opinions on what happened but yeah overall no complaints it all worked out so there you go guys got our first food challenge win in Mexico guys did a big burger challenge in Mexico apparently the first person to beat it there apparently maybe only the second ever to do it and yeah so it's pretty good um, the burgers overall were solid honestly if I was served that at a restaurant I would say it was solid um, in America I would or Canada I would probably be a little bit harder on it, but for here, honestly, it was pretty dang solid. Uh, no complaints. Hamburgers are not really a traditional Mexican dish, but so in regards to any hamburger I've ever had in a country outside of like Canada, US, it was it was probably it was good. It was really good. Um, burgers, that is. The fries. The fries were like fries, but uh, no complaints, guys. So yeah, that's my objective opinion. That's the overall experience. Pretty interesting, especially with the whole you can get a free or 50% off more food. And I'm like, bruh. So yeah, yeah. anyway, we did get a meal free, which is pretty cool. And uh, so there's gonna be lots of Mexico in this video. There's so much cool stuff going on, guys. It's been a hell of an experience. Mexico is a place that I, I don't know. I never really looked into it that much, but it is absolutely insane. There's so much natural beauty, guys. There's so much culture. I love the food, and uh, there's gonna be a lot more of it. So. Mexico, challenge one, hopefully another one coming up. I'm a little nervous. The way, if I go back and do the wing challenge there, like how they're gonna treat me with that. I mean, I actually purposely did this burger challenge first, thinking that if I did the wing challenge first, they would have the ability to, you know, like add more food. Like the burgers with the fries and stuff, they can add more food, but if the challenge is 100 wings, I'm assuming it's 100 wings and they're not supposed to be picante, they're not supposed to be spicy. So, I don't know, if I go back, I don't know what kind of experience we'll get, but 100 wings, hopefully. Hopefully no more, and uh, so let's see what happens. Till next time, have a lovely day everybody, much appreciate it. If you like the video, please consider subscribing, more stuff coming our way, and uh, let's have some more fun in Mexico. Buenos dias, everybody. Buenos dias, amigos. Uh, so this might seem a little weird that hey like Joel you're just outside of Costco. It's no big deal uh, It's a little different guys. This is Costco Mexico. So this is a Mexican Costco. I have no clue what to expect We're gonna just go check it out see what they have. I don't know if I'm gonna buy anything I don't know if I'm gonna eat anything, but I got to go see what it looks like uh, why I'm not gonna eat Potentially not eat anything. I really want to go to the gym after this and I don't like to eat closely to the gym um, But that being said Mexican Costco. So it should be really cool. You do need a membership. Everybody needs a membership. Unlike North America, Canada, US, uh, that part of North America at least, um, where you can like bring in a whole family with your membership. Everybody needs a membership here, which is pretty interesting. Maybe a, a exception for niños, little kids. But uh, let's go see what a Mexican Costco looks like. All right, we are inside and I don't notice anything different really. Like honestly, if somebody told me that we were in a Costco in Canada or the US, I would exactly believe it. Uh, the only difference so far is everything's in pesos, so it looks like you're paying, you know, $29,000 for a laptop, but 
at least it's pesos. That's actually not bad laptop there. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. Let's uh, see what else they got. But yeah, that's it. the entrance even looks the same. Everything is replicable, replica. How do you say that? Rep repli uh, replication, the same. It's uh, not replica. A replica, yeah, see. Replica of everywhere else, and there's still all the crazy lines. I do see a food code over there. It looks like uh, the, the, the famous hot dogs are 40 pesos. That's about two American dollars. Very interesting. Let's see what else we got. Got some uh, headphones. Yeah, literally, this is so far exactly the same. There's a GoPro. I do need to get one of those one day. I used to have one. Yeah, what happened? I returned it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, look, even the clothing. Yeah, this is, I feel like I'm back in uh, Canada, the US. Pretty typical Costco. Going to Costco is usually something I do with my parents or my mom. So this is, so shout out to my mom. We'll go to Costco next time I'm back home. Here we have the famous Costco pumpkin pies. Guys, the famous Costco pumpkin pies. If you're not familiar, what's awesome about them is they're massive, they're cheap, they're really good. So here it is about five American dollars, basically. So I think that's roughly the same price you get in America, like five, six bucks. Um, and it weighs, geez, almost like four pounds, basically. So 1.6 kilos, about four pounds, roughly. So yeah. Pretty cool. The produce and everything. Very interesting. Oh, look, here's a pumpkin pie. Now, I mean, they probably have these in America. I'm not used to, I, I just don't recall. And this is about uh, $13. But again, it's like a four pound pecan pie, which is probably delicious. So this is something a little neat. So if you're not familiar, pecania, is at least I'm familiar with it in the Brazilian culture. They call it the queen. It's a very loved and noted piece of beef. It's basically kind of like a top sirloin, but they leave a big fat cap on it. Um, but I've never actually seen it marketed as a picanha in the United States or Canada. But here in Mexico, they do it. Cool. So they're still doing their uh, samples, just with like, you know, socially distanced things. Here you can actually buy a Spanish style ham. Look at it. Like literally it's still being cured or essentially it was cured. Now it's just vacuum packed. Like this is being held at room temperature and that's just A-OK. -okay. That is pretty cool. It is very well preserved, I guess. And it comes with a knife. So guys, get your own kit of a Spanish ham. Um, here we got some, looks like hors d'oeuvres kind of things, or desserts. Uh, Mediterranean pastries, that's what they are. And then, yeah, we have the big meat section, which is pretty, pretty typical. They have all the cheese, we have lots of queso, lots of cheese here, it's pretty typical. We got some really nice uh, looking packs. I mean, here we got our uh, different kinds of milks. We have like, uh, low, like no light, light lactose free milks and stuff all the ultra pasteurized milks which consider room temperature here we have your silk your almond milk again way more cheeses lots of lots of cheeses everywhere they must cheese must be a big thing here here's some cottage cheese I like cottage cheese it's uh, three pounds for like 650 that's probably, probably about as cheap as you're gonna get it um, but yeah <laughs> like I said, it's I'm, it's surprisingly just like a Costco. I'm not not sure I necessarily expected something different, but so far just seems very traditional. Of course, they have kind of their own unique items. Um, you know, like the brands, the Spanish brands for sure, or I should say the Mexican brands. But pretty much so far, shockingly uh, replicable. I also went to a Walmart the other day. I didn't know they Walmart in Mexico. Again, kind of the same thing. Um, just very comparable, very comparable to what I've seen in Canada, North America. We got some Lucky Charms. It's one of my favorite cereals. A lot of people don't, probably don't know that, but. Uh, big double box for 
nine dollars. That's honestly probably a little more you paid America, or about the same. Um, so obviously I haven't had the Fruit Loops, but the box does look different. And the colors look a little different, at least on the image. But certain things look exactly the same. Corn Pops, that's a different box. Sucaritas, so that's very different than uh, Frosted Flakes, what we see in America, Canada, but same thing. Here we have a Cocoa Krispies, uh, Chocolate Rice Krispies. I do like those a lot. I like Chocolate Rice Krispies. That's also one of my, I'd say, kind of favorite cereals. Um, we have some, but then things like Quaker, like that looks the exact same to me. So yeah, this is pretty impressive. Costco in Mexico. Then there's a lot of familiar items, like these, I like avocado oil is definitely in America and Canada available, but here obviously it is in Spanish. Here we have all our spices. Which again are pretty much they're the exact thing you're obviously getting in Canada, North America, USA, but just a little different as it's in Spanish. So pretty cool. Same as their famous garlic, famous jars of peeled, chopped garlic. Here's some extra virgin olive oil. I got some stevia. More samples. This guy is doing a nest quick. Got some clothing. I don't know, clothing might be, in general, clothing has been cheaper here whenever we saw it at stores. I'd be curious to see how much. Well, that's a $20 for a pair of jeans. Actually, that's their brand of jeans. That's the Lucky whatever. So I pay this, that's the same as in uh, Canada, North America. Actually, that might be a little more expensive, like a dollar more, but interesting. So it's possible I've been sleeping under a rug, but I have never seen a two liter container of haagen -Dazs. I have definitely only ever seen the little, I don't even know what they are, 300, 400, 500 mil packs. So here for uh, like 12, 50, let's say 13 bucks, you can get a half gallon or two liters of haagen -Dazs. That is a, that's a good deal. I mean, hey, it's a lot cheaper than you normally pay for the little little things, so that's cool. I've never seen that before. Here's your like infant formula, you know, kinder things. But this is interesting. I've never seen this term. I've seen M&M Rice Krispies, but I've never seen blasted Rice Krispie treats. So this one is blasted with chocolate, apparently. So that's definitely unique. Here, something else a little different that I've haven't seen is so they're selling their perfumes in Costco, which I've definitely seen. But here it's behind a cage. Like it's behind the, the, you go to the lady, you go to the stand, instead of being in like a little security box, which I've normally seen them. Of course, Costco has their big lines, their standard big lines. Here we got some whey protein, uh, $75, definitely, if any, uh, at least five, what's that, seven pounds. I guess that's probably what you'd pay in America or Canada, like roughly the same. All their prescriptions, you go to the pharmacy, I would go to the pharmacy, here you can buy some prescription drugs without a prescription, which you can't in North America. I don't know all which ones, but probably like Viagra and probably like Ativan and whatever, so. Very interesting. Here we got some uh, Libres, if you're a diabetic, got some uh, Glucose monitors, I would have to compare the prices. But yeah, pretty interesting. So here's the Costco food items. It's very uh, very traditional, very similar to what I see in Canada America, except this is different for me. So you can get a frappe or a mango smoothie um, for, you know, a dollar or, what, yeah, a dollar 75 American. Um, 75 cents for soda, it's about the same. Water, 25 cents, that's the same. Um, hot dogs, two bucks. I think that's maybe a little bit more. I think like a dollar fifty, but still a quarter pound. Uh, chicken bake, that I think is kind of different to me, but they change it all the time. And then pizza, two dollars a slice, or you can grab a whole 18 inch for 10 bucks. So that's pretty traditional. But uh, yeah, I, I'm not getting one, but this is the. Uh, that's what they look like right there. Hello. Hola. 
And look at this lid. That's cool. It's like a Starbucks lid. I've never seen that, at least in North America, but maybe I just haven't been to Costco recently, so. Very cool. In a panaria, a bakery. Smells huele, huele bueno. Smells very good. I like these meringues, they look like uh, ice cream. So this is like 25 cents American. Uh, 25 cents American for a little donut. To $1.75 pecan pie. It's probably really, really good though. I got some big donuts. So yeah, you grab a tray and just grab what you want. Got some uh, beautiful muffins. Much pumpkin, pumpkin seeds or something. Some little loaves. We have a uh, concha shaped uh, things. So uh, we've seen a few donuts, but these donuts probably look the best I've seen so far. And this is uh, bakeries per our locals here. So, oh, hold on. We got a hoof. Looks like a horseshoe. And yeah, these bakeries, these panerias are just everywhere. But uh, oh, that looks good. It's like looks like buttered and sugared. At least sugared. Cookies. Oh, those look good. Everything's good. You can tell them. Uh, you can tell I'm hungry. You can tell you're hungry and everything looks good. But yeah, so bakeries, again, these are ever Every block is a panaria. But again, it's not supposed to be very, very good. So, well done. Looks good. Those are cool. Marzipan. And here we're gonna have some Mexican and arguably Italian style barbecue. <laughs> Looks good though. There's uh, no shortage of meat. We got pork chops, we got ribs, we got beef. What else we have? Arrachera. Arrachera. And, and sausage. sausage. What the end? Had an absolutely amazing meal. There's great cooks here, but of course it was a family meal. I was gonna interrupt that with the camera, with the video, but it was absolutely delicious, guys. All that meat was fantastic. Uh, all cooked on a barbecue on a grill. Here we have a uh, homemade focaccia as well. We got tomatoes, tomates, just like olive oil, and is it basil? Basil in there? Um, Good stuff. Oregano. Oregano with some cheeses, with some oil, tomates. It's Emma. We got some desserts. We got a homemade flan. Got a Neapolitan kind of pastry, cream filled thing, a, uh, a roll of some sort, lots of chocolate. We also have this absolutely delicious salsa verde. It's like an avocado sauce. Um, uh, wasacaca, it's a Venezuelan um, technically, but oh, so good. And just so good, guys. Good food, good people. I like the poinsettias. Do those originate in Mexico? Here we are in a beautiful, I don't even know what you call it, hallway, but uh, very interesting sculptures here. There's some gentlemen. We have little prints. We have a cat, I guess, a Christmas cat. But uh, very beautiful. I love the, uh, love the architecture. Just white and pretty. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you click my face right here, you can subscribe. Yes, that's right, click my face, subscribe, guys. It helps me out, it helps you out, then you don't miss an upload, and hopefully I can meet you when I come to your city. Also, click a video right here. I specifically picked two videos, yes, that's right, two videos specifically for you right here. So click a video right now, get that going, and it's gonna end, so click one quick. Let's go, let's go, and have a great day.